Welcome to the Voice of the Coast with yours truly. I am Danica Foley Long, and I'm here with Diane Wilt, who is on the board of directors with the Tesh Theater for Performing Arts. So it's because I I want to say everything. Tesh I, I Theater know for it's such a it's Arts. a mouthful. Yes, yes, it is a mouthful. Um, and that's another story because my mind was going somewhere else with that. Right. But it's always a pleasure to have you and here. And it's always a pleasure being with you, Danica. Thank you all so much for inviting me to talk. And just so you know, uh, the director here for KWBJ, we were like, what, are we, what is her title for this? Because you have so many titles. You wear so many hats. Mm, yeah. yeah, sometimes I have to remember which hat I'm wearing. So <laughs> today, yeah, right. Okay, Board of Directors, Tesh Theater. Yeah. That's right, <laughs> right. And so, of course, with everything that's going on now, I mean, we kind of start off everything with COVID, COVID, COVID. The pandemic and the impact it's had on Tesh Theater and the performances. Okay, well, thank you again for mm -hmm. having me here as your guest. Um, interesting that we start there because our season at the Tesh Theater closed with Driving Miss Daisy, and I had the privilege and honor of working with Courtney Long, uh, who we affectionately call Skyla. I'm sure you have another affectionate <laughs> name with him since that time you guys have uh, gotten married. So congratulations to you Thank all. You. I think y'all make a wonderful couple uh, and certainly both assets to our community. Uh, but <clears throat> we closed, the Sunday that we closed with Driving Miss Daisy with, again, uh, Courtney and Ed Tiger Verdon, uh, was a Sunday that the governor made the announcement that the state basically was closing down because of COVID-19. So we were able over at the Tesh Theater to end our season, season with our spring production or our African-American, I think it was part of that uh, uh, run, production of Driving Miss Daisy in time, I guess, you know. Since then, uh, like most theaters, even Broadway, we have been shuttered in and we have not been able to do the shows in the season that we're going to be talking about that we wanted to do. So did it have an impact on us? Certainly it had an impact on us economically, culturally, as far as our entertainment co world is concerned, as far as the services that we try to provide to our communities, it has had a huge impact on us. And as a board member yourself, and also as a performing actress, I might say it, who did a stellar performance as Calpurnia in To Kill a Mockingbird for the year, I think it was the year before that, that we did To Kill a Mockingbird, and it was on television. Okay, but like you said, you and I can talk a lot <laughs> recently. And I thought about what your rendition of Calpurnia, which I thought floored everyone. Um, so we miss that. So we're itching to get back into the swing of things, but here we are. Well, let's talk about something you guys actually did, and I have to, I'm separating myself for this interview. Okay, okay. It went virtual. Yeah, yeah. And it was a hit. Yeah. If I recall, maybe in upwards of 300 plus, maybe even touching 350, 400, people who watched the virtual performance of Driving Miss Daisy. I, Why don't we do that more often? I know there's parameters, but yeah. can you talk about it? I can talk about it to, to a certain extent. I think that, first of all, you just didn't know. You, you didn't know what kind of audience you were going to have. You didn't know the um, how legitimate it would be. We didn't know the legalities. Once we found out that, okay, yeah, we can do this, you know. So we did it, and as you said, we were pleasantly surprised to say the least to see the and I don't know how to talk all that jargon the hits of the people that you know watched it uh, because I always say and of course you know a live stage performance is meant to be just that you have to watch it because to see it on film it, it, it's different. It's different. You don't get the zoom ins, the close up, the voiceovers, the, the switching. You're actually watching a live show that was filmed, uh, you know. Uh, but we did do that. Um, why don't we do it more often? Well, first of all, we got to get those live shows to film unless we go back in our uh, library of those things that we have done and see if there's a good copy and, and do that. I'm, I, I think we, I never got a copy of it, but I think, I don't know if we did, if we filmed um, To Kill a Mockingbird, but that would be interesting to see the lot, to see it, you yeah. know, uh, virtually. But I don't push it as often, as I said, because um, it's meant to be, live theater is meant to be viewed live. Yeah. And of course, when you get into royalties and you know, all of those other kinds of 
we were talking off camera, I's that you dot and T's that you cross, we want to make sure that we're doing it right. Right. And look, now, this is only what, I think there may have been maybe one or two questions. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the first segment. Yeah. So, but we're going to dive deeper into this. So definitely come on back right here on The Voice of the Coast. We have much more to cover. Welcome back to the Voice of the Coast. Again, I am your host, Danica Foley Long, and with me we have Diane Wilts, who is on the board of directors with Tesh Theater for the Performing Arts. We ended our conversation pretty much kind of talking about the impact of COVID, but there is a silver lining yes, in yes. this, and we'll get to silver again yeah. in a moment. There have been rentals. Folks are wanting to get out, and they're taking precautions. Tell us about the latest rental that was at the Tesh Theater. Okay, well, as we said earlier, we're still shuttered in, kind of still negotiating that with our board members as to when we're ready to reopen our season. But in addition to that, we have had um, one rental and then one usage, and I'll talk about the difference between that. The last rental that we had under the COVID closure was Andre Carville and Lindsay Moss. Lindsay is a concert pianist. She lives in Germany. She's a native of actually Franklin, graduated from Hanson, went on to LSU and then got her master's, I've forgotten where, and lives in Germany and plays concert piano over there. Came home to visit her mother. She and Andre, Andre Carville, who is a um, opera singer who travels not only nationally but internationally with his opera. Uh, he's right there from um, one of our sister cities down the road there, not Abbeville, gosh darn it, I'm sorry if Andre's folks are listening to this, yeah. I can't remember where, but he's right there from the road and they hooked up, came down here and decided would it be okay if we rented the Tesh to do a concert uh, for some of our families and, and for the locals. Yeah. Um, after the board met and talked about it and we agreed on a contract with them, of course we said yes, but the restriction would be that mask would have to be worn for that. And because of their professions, they wanted that. So much so that the Tesh Theater board had said, well, we'll just sell, we'll sell some, a few concessions outside. They again got with us and said, could you not do that, please? Because then the concessions would have to come in, which means that the people would have to take their mask off to eat or drink, and we don't want that. And we were, okay, great, that's fine for us. So uh, it was very well attended. People did adhere to the mask requirement that we had in place, and um, they were pleased, Andre and Lindsay were pleased with the attendance and it was a pre-ticket sale a type of event. Oh, and it was wonderful. It, it yeah. really was just so I'm great. I'm sure it just felt, to get, felt good to oh, get out. Oh, just to sit there and listen and be there. And again, we talk about us as board members as well as performers, but the general public, they want that, you know? And so, yeah, it was, it was a job well done on both ends by our board of directors, allowing that rental to happen, and then by the performers themselves and by the uh, patronage that came out to support it. We had no issues with masks being worn. Awesome. So, of course, there's rentals and then, of course, there's city usage. Uh, I don't think a lot of folks understand that, you know, the Test Theater being such a local treasure, you know, we would love to stake claim to it, but it really is a city building. It is owned by the city of Franklin and it is leased uh, to the Tesh Theater for the Performing Arts Board to be our home base to do, uh, to offer live performances um, and some of the other programming that we have as part of our uh, repertoire, yeah. So, but it is actually owned by the city of Franklin. So this past summer, LaDacia Bowles Weber, who like you and I wear many hats, she sits on our board of directors. Uh, but she also works along with the city of Franklin to provide cultural enrichment through her dance. And so every summer, the Bayou Bow, a dance program that comes under the city, um, she does a 
works with the little children and the young ladies and young men uh, during the summer and then she does a concert and so she had her concert uh, through, through the through the Tesh Theater. That's happy. To, that's that's good to know because the kids also still want to get out and get involved. Yes. And you know, with COVID again, it places so many restrictions on how we are able to move forward in a COVID world, a pandemic world. But um, there, if there's a will, there's a way. That's so right. So we'll come back again. We are moving forward and talking about just all the different productions and performances that or have been either delayed or will continue to move forward. Yes. So you guys come on back right here on The Voice of the Coast. Welcome back to the Voice of the Coast. My guest today is Diane Wills. On the, she sits on the board of directors with Tesh Theater for the Performing Arts. Now we talked about something for the kids. The summer production is typically for them. And Bayou Bow with Ladesha Bowles Weber was able to move forward. Yes. And from what I understand, it was a success. But it was it's always a success. Yeah. I think the kids really enjoy coming out, getting involved. Young ladies, young men, all in, you know are involved. And usually at the Touch Theater, the summer is dedicated towards the children, yeah. the youth. We're a little far away ahead. I mean, we, you know, we're kind of speaking in the future now, but this next production that you guys are at least slated for summer 2022 yes. is Rent. Yeah. Now, Rent is an adult feature, right? Yeah, I mean, more so, young adults. That's yeah. exactly right. So that's going to somewhat exclude children or I would think kids uh, under 18 because of the context of the show. Uh, of course, it's a well-liked show, particularly for those who are young adults or for those who, I talked off camera about being a bohemian kind of uh, show, like, like the storyline there. Mm -hmm. um, you cannot do Andrew Lloyd Webber when you, when you talk about musicals and all of the, the songs and everyone knows 525, yeah, yeah everyone mm -hmm. knows that one, right? Uh, 600 minutes, yeah. So I, it's that type of, of show. So uh, we are talking about, and I think, I, I think Carolyn Higdon has been wanting to do this show forever. The late Tyra Yarber also wanted to do Rent. Uh, and when you do a show, you have to think about your audience and the uh, communities that you play to. Uh, I can say, and I'll, I'll have to admit, I was the old fogey that uh, was always reticent about taking on that storyline. Um, and we'll see, we'll see, you know. But as I said, I, I, I'm going to work with the board. I'll do my part to make sure that it is a success. I think at this point we have moved forward with acquiring the rights to do it. And it's my understanding, because New York also is having difficulty with putting shows on, that we got a, a deal that uh, we couldn't mm, refuse that's right. Yeah, to take it on. So uh, if everything works out the way it's supposed to, Rent will be the summer show for 2022, and I'm sure they will be auditioning because it's a challenging show. Mm -hmm. Not only storyline, but I mean the music and that kind of thing. And the number of actors the you will need. The number of actors who can sing or at least know enough music. So knowing Carolyn Higdon the way I do and whoever's going to be working with her musically, um, I think Allison Jones is also wanting to do that show. Lede Chabot, yeah. those are our musical people. That's at least three. Yeah, yeah <laughs> So right, we need right, about right. 10 to 15, That's right? That's right. I think it's 10 to 15 as far as the cast mm -hmm. is concerned. Yeah. Um, now let's move forward to something a little more present. Okay. <clears throat> and it's actually been postponed. Okay. We won't put the C word on there just yet. No. And that's Glass Menagerie. And speaking of Alice, Allison Jones, she is a Tennessee Williams aficionado. So yes, this is something is. she really wants to do and she has not said no to it. No. Uh, we are in September and this is something that may come out November. We're hoping that we can get it out sometimes before the year ends. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that before the year ends. I think November was loosely uh, somewhere in that month, but because things are changing constantly when we talk about COVID and Delta and immunizations and vaccines that and new guidelines that we don't know. But if we can stay on this track, well, at least move the track upward, and uh, we learn how to have events and be more social, then I think November 
is the month that she wants to do the Glass Menagerie. They've been in rehearsals, you know, because they went into rehearsal actually when we were still doing Driving Miss Daisy, they were in rehearsal for the Glass Menagerie. And I'm going to tell you, with this virtual world we're in, it's only four people. They are rehearsing, from what I understand, virtually. Yeah. They're doing it by Zoom call. Yeah, yeah, so, right. So it might end up, if we can't get the audience there, you ask, ask earlier, what about a virtual show? That may be the way we have to do it. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, I'm going to save the best for last. Okay. And <clears throat> this is something that you and I work on oh, together, yeah. but again, I'm going to try to distance myself for this. And we're going to take a break. When we'll come back. We're going to talk about silver screen classics. Okay. And, and that has become one of my favorites, but also murder mystery, which is one was up, they're up there together because I really love it. I love the interaction that it has with the with the public. So yeah. come on back right here on the Voice of the Coast on KWBJ TV 22. <laughs> Welcome back to the Voice of the Coast. My guest for today is Diane Wiltz, who's on the board of directors with Tesh Theater for the Performing Arts. Again, my favorite part, and I was so happy to be a part of this, and I'm learning a lot, and that's the Silver Screen Classics. Um, you are just the expert on this, but again, I'm along for the ride. I'm learning more about um, some of these feature films that we've put out, and just kind of like, it's like nostalgia for a lot of our aging, senior population. They love it and they come out and just really enjoy it. I love the, what do we call it? Sig, Sig, uh, Ebert, Ebert. Uh, what is it? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Ebert and, uh, oh, I can't think of his name now because the other guy's doing it what's, right what's now. What's the name? Siskel. Siskel and Ebert. Ebert. Yes. Siskel and Ebert. Well, yeah, yes, we're right. And I love the Q&A. I love giving the information. I think it's great. It just adds to to, to the actual event. I mean, we, we get up there, we talk about it, they have, they have questions, it's great. But is it coming back? <laughs> oh, it's coming back. Oh, yes, 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 you and I both know. Oh yeah, it is definitely gonna come back. We, uh, I hate to keep saying it because I know it sounds redundant, but because of COVID and the population that we were catering to, which was more the, it was open to anyone, but more to the elderly population, they had some really rigid restrictions as far as travel is concerned. And then we were, you know, had our own restrictions, you know. Also, many of them were from the nursing home. Let's just say that too. Most, so. that's exactly yeah. right. And they were bust in and we mm -hmm. just, it was so wonderful. We had cards. Courtney Long was on our board as well. We had beautiful publicity out on it. It was just clicking right along and mm, then we got that punch. Yeah. But yes, it will be coming back. Okay. And uh, you and I have talked about, you know, getting together and picking our shows and getting them to come back. We've had uh, we, Ms. Beverly DiMaggio, who's a regular guest on your show and who is the director of the Council on Aging here in St. Mary Parish uh, just asked me the other day, are we going to get the silver? And I said, oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We're going to get that back. Now, when becomes the, you know, that's the $2 million question. When yeah. are we going to get it back? Uh, once our board meets, maybe we can talk about that. But it's getting them there because, mm -hmm. again, the transportation service, I think right now they're on a hiatus uh, as far as transporting people, I think is what Ms. Beverly told me. So we need to, you know, coordinate with them and talk about that. And I just want to, you, you said something. Yes, we cater to mm -hmm. our aging population, but it is open to anyone. And mm -hmm. it warmed my heart to see little ones there with their grandparents or their parents. That was awesome. I would love to see more of our young people attend the younger generation. I'm glad you said that because that is why, and you were generous when you said that I'm the expert. I don't know if I'm the expert, but the reason that I have such an affection for the Silver Screen Classics is because my mother and my grandmother, we never had an automobile, uh, so we had to walk wherever we went, and uh, they loved going to the movies because for a long time we didn't even have a television set. So we would go to the movies, and a lot of the movies that we have shown are movies that they would walk with us because families, wherever you went, you went together, and she, they would take us to the movies with them. And so I remember being a little girl sitting at the Tesh Theater, and or at the center theater which is now our pocket park but sitting there with them watching the movies and that was our form of entertainment so like you 
I love it when the grandparents come in with their grandchildren because it takes me back to what happened to me when I was a little girl. Well, let me take you back. Okay. So my grandmother it was from up north Louisiana. I'm talking about Boondock City, okay. town, ville. Uh, <laughs> What's well, right, right. I mean, <laughs> right, 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 right. And she had maybe two channels. And I believe uh, what we believe, what we know now is TCM with Turner Classic That's movie. exactly right. Yes. So I, I, I know the feeling. Yeah. I know yeah, the yeah. feeling. And, and we didn't go to the it. movie theater up there. No. Yeah. <laughs> but you had a chance to watch it and they were such good stories. And, and uh, it was a story and things that you could be entertained with your grandparents were together. Last question. We only have about 20 seconds. Sure. Murder Mystery. That was like the favorite, I think, with young, old, wherever you were on the spectrum. What's going on with that? Jonas Butel. Uh, Two thumbs up for him who brought that idea to the Tesh Theater. It's coming back. It's coming back because it's interactive now. Again, we just, it's hard to do a show with a mask on because mm -hmm. everything was facial expressions, but it's coming back. I'll do it with closed captions. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. See you guys next time. Thank you so much for joining us on The Voice of the Coast.